Hi, and welcome to A Toast to Truth, where we share our experiences dealing with emotional, mental, and financial frustrations in business. Have you ever dealt with someone stealing your ideas? This is Season 2, Episode 5, When People Steal Your Ideas. Today's special guest host is a great friend and accountability partner of mine, the iconic entrepreneur, Joanne A.J. Scott, founder of Essence of a Lady. Hi, Joanne. Welcome to the show. Hi, Vanetta. I am so excited to be here. Okay, so I'm excited about this topic, but before we get to the topic, I want us to pop some bubbly. So Joanne and I are going to share something that we are excited about at this moment. So just one second, everyone. Okay, so my popping bubbly moment is I am creating my first physical product. It is a journal, the Truth Confidant Journal, and it has been a beast (laughs) to do, but I am excited. It took me eight months to get it exactly the way that I want it, and I can't wait to until everyone is able to purchase their copy. So that is my my popping bubbly moment. Joanne has a very special celebration that I know she's been waiting years to finally say she's able to do. So, Joanne, what is your um, thing that you're excited about right now? Vanetta, I must admit, I am so, so excited about the opportunity of retiring from teaching this year. Yes, after 19 Yay! years of teaching, I'm excited to be I'm retired. excited for you. I am so excited for you. I've known Joanne for like, oh, gosh, four or five years now, a really long time. Like, um, I always like to tell the listeners how I know people. Joanne and I, I, I don't want to say we met by accident. But her nail technician um, was supposed to attend the very first fusion, and she wasn't able to. And so she gifted Joanne her ticket, and that is how we met. We became accountability partners. She was the MC for Fusion Tour. She traveled with me. Um, Joanne has been along the journey. So, <laughs> so this topic in particular, we – we can definitely say, yes, we have seen the other person deal with certain situations. <laughs> so let's let's get into uh, today's topic, which is when people, you know, when people are stealing your ideas, which is, I'm going to give, I've had quite a few experiences, but I'm only going to give uh, one right now, and it'll be short. There was this group of ladies in Louisiana who decided they wanted to start an organization. Not a problem. But they decided they wanted to name their organization Women Are Game Changers. So I'm trying to understand how that was okay when the name of my company at the time was Women Are Game Changers. So I reached out to them and I asked them to stop using using the name, and their response was, They didn't see the problem when we live in two different states. So what was the big idea or what was the big problem I had with them using the name? So that got me into a little bit of a a frenzy where I'm like, I could drive to Louisiana. You know, it's not that far. (laughs) But I just couldn't believe that they were so blatantly using women or game changers when it belonged to someone else. So after weeks of, you know, us contacting them, sending Facebook information, they kind of finally abandoned the name. Um, And that was just one person who used it. That was just one person. But um, that 
was my first foray into understanding trademark, um, which I'm still in a legal battle with someone over the name Women Are Game Changers, which is absurd. But um, I really did not understand the importance of trademarking my name until I got into that situation. Uh, I know Joanne has, you know, she runs Essence of a Lady, Yale Mentoring. She's in three states. So I have seen people try to copy some of what she's done. And, you know, Joanne, how do you deal with that when someone is is taking what you created and try to make money off of it? Well, it's funny you ask that, Vanetta, because I – for many, many years, uh, I had Essence of a Lady. In fact, we celebrate 27 years this month. And what I noticed was I would always go and Google my name just to make sure because I knew it was a unique name and it wasn't something that just was out there. And I would never find anything. But in the past couple of years, I've found two people who are using Essence of a lady. So I'm actually in a a fight right now to do two things. Well, first of all, there is someone in South Carolina who has Essence of a Lady LLC. I discovered that when I was registering uh, my nonprofit Essence of a Lady on one of the reward sites for volunteers. And it popped up. Essence of a Lady LLC in North Carolina. I'm like, what? And then the second time I discovered it was someone right in Houston, Texas, who has a boutique called Essence of a Lady. So needless to say, I am in a battle with these two people trying to get them to understand that Essence of a Lady This nonprofit has been around for 27 years. It's registered with the state. Therefore, it's illegal for them to be using it. Plus, I'm also in the process of trademarking because of this reason. People had mentioned it, but now I see the urgency and the importance of trademarking your name. It's worth it. Yeah, and and it's funny because, you know, when you're creating something, you're not thinking of someone stealing your idea. You're you're more focused on actually, you know, making a name for yourself, uh, being original, creating something that is distinctive in the marketplace. And, you know, having a trademark is not something that is on people's minds. And I really think it should be especially because, you know, we're both in situations where we're now having to fight to to say this is our identity, you know, this was our business identity first. Um, why were you hesitant from, you know, trademarking originally? I just never thought, I just always thought I had time. I mean, God's honest truth, people, I always just thought, you know, when I'm more established, when things are settled down, Oh, trademark. I always thought it was something you can do later. I had no clue how important it was to do it before you even really get a lot of stuff out there on the market. Well, I just always felt that, I I guess it was ignorance. I just thought people would respect the fact that the name is already taken. Because all you have to do is Google and it will give you information related to that particular name. But as you stated earlier, people's mindset is, well, you're not in my state, so I should be able to use it. Which, before you think that, that's just like plagiarism, taking people's words and using it for yourself simply because you think that it's okay. And people just, I mean, their moral values are not the way yours is. You think everyone would think like you, but they don't. So that's why it's so critical to 
trademark your name. You know, I found an attorney, and and what one thing that I had the reason I hesitated at the time was because of money. They want six hundred dollars to do it. However, I know you can do it yourself. You know, it's a learning curve, but you can do it yourself if you don't have the money. But if you have the money, it will be worth all of the six hundred dollars whatever the attorney charges to make that happen for you. Yeah, um, if you go online, and I think it's like United States Patent Trademark Office, so it's USPTO.gov, you can file online. So for those who, you know, have something unique and you want to trademark, go to that website. I think it's USPTO.gov. And then you want to do a trademark search because you want to make sure that, you know, even though we, we're we using Google, we have Google Alerts. Actually, the Google Alert is what helped me <laughs> find out that someone was using my name. But, you know, if you go to the trademark site, they'll be able to search all types of records to make sure that your name is not being used, and then you can file online. It is a lot cheaper um, to file online. You just really have to understand and have things in place. Um, One thing that messed up my situation is we changed our logo. So the original logo that we had in 2011 and when we filed in 2000. 14 were not the same. And so that's, that is what's causing the rift because someone else claimed that they created Women Are Game Changers first and they had a continuation of their logo or whatever the situation was. So be, you know, <laughs> be cognizant of when you change your logo if you have not already trademarked your name or trademarked your um yeah your your name and stuff like that so that is that to me is something i didn't know so i hope that you all you know really understand that trademark is important but what's more important is understanding that you need to have all of your information together keep it um keep it continually in use and try not to change your logo before you trademark so those are some things that um, I've learned. Now, Joanne mentioned money. You know, some people may say $600 is not a lot of money, but Joanne, you've been an entrepreneur, an iconic entrepreneur for decades. Could you please, you know, explain to people what $600 really means to an entrepreneur? Funny you should ask that question or mention it, Bernetta. $600 I mean, it's the difference in being able to purchase supplies and materials for your business, uh, pay for a business expense that you normally pay for every single year to keep your name out and connected with other people in your industry or your, uh, you know, connected with similar companies that you do business with. So every penny counts. $600 is the amount of money that we spend for software to make sure people are able to connect easily and make donations. Dollars is a lot of money because it can make the differences in functioning at the level that you need to function at to service your clientele uh, needs. So $600 is a lot of money no matter how many years you've been in business. But when it comes to your trademark, it will be worth every penny because you're either going to spend money on the front end to protect your name and your brand. So you have to make a conscious decision and prepare your budget to make sure that you think of these little things that can make a big difference. As the old saying goes, elephants don't bite, ants do. In business, it's the little things that can make the difference. I like that. Elephants don't bite, ants do. And and you made a very good point about, you know, 
$600 and you gave several examples, what people don't understand, think of, say, you know, you want to host an event. Our very first event, Fusion, we spent $300 on the venue, and we thought we were getting a good deal. You know, two hours, $300, we didn't know. (laughs) My sister and I had no clue. But that's half of $600 right there. That didn't include food. That didn't include anything else that we had to buy for the event. So if you have $600 and you want to have an event and your venue is $300, that's half of it right there. Now, on the flip side, what Joanne is is stating to everyone is that you are investing in your business when you get your trademark. So it's not an expense. And I think people may get investments and expenses confused because when you have um, when you have an when you have an expense, you are paying something and you're not really going to get a return on on that money. Now, when you have an an investment, you're going to get a return on that money. Take, for instance, stocks and bonds. You know, some of them have quick returns. Some of them are more long-term um, as far as you getting your money back. But a trademark is considered a long-term investment because you can eventually, if you want to, you can do licensing with, you know, your trademark. You can sell it in the future. So there's options in the long term when you get a trademark. I mean, am I am I wrong, Joanne? I mean, there's options, more financial options having a trademark than not having a trademark. You're exactly right, Vanetta. At, for all the reasons that you stated, you know, having a trademark is very important in your business because, like we stated, you're either going to invest that money on the front end I have major expenses on the back end. So make a sound. Lawyer fees are expenses, people. Lawyer fees are expenses. They're not an investment. (laughs) Exactly. Those are (laughs) definitely expenses. And as Vanetta stated, you know, if you choose to sell your business in the future because you secured it and, and made sure that it was the only name out there being used, then it makes it a more viable uh, business to be sold. So keep that in mind when you're making decisions about your business. And don't get caught up in all the other things. Make that one of your number one, make that one of your priorities to get your name trademarked so you don't go through the things that Vanetta and I are experiencing. In fact, one thing, another thing that I forgot to mention is someone has even written a book called Essence of a Lady. Oh, wow. They went, okay. wrote a that book. is crazy. Okay, we're going to get into that after break. Um, so before we head to break, I want everyone to keep that on your mind. We're going to get into uh, Joanne saying that someone has uh, written a book using her name. So what we're going to do now is take a sip. Okay, so now it's time for us to take a sip. Ready to face the truth in your business? Schedule a truth power session. I act as your sounding board, giving you feedback, critique, suggestions, while teaching you how to mentally detox using journaling. Go to com backslash truth confidant. And don't forget that you can purchase or pre-order your truth confidant journal. Okay, so we are back, and we're going to have Joanne share how someone decided to write a book with her, her her organization's name. How did you even find out that someone wrote a book? Again, I was I was searching Essence of a Lady 
just to see because for some reason I just started searching more often than I used to. And I was, and it popped up. The book, the author, everything popped up. And I was like, oh, my God, when did this happen? Someone is bold enough to go out and write a book using Essence of a Lady? (laughs) Did they not look and see that Essence of a Lady was already out there? (laughs) But I think it goes back to what you were saying, you know, before, before the break, that, you know, some people just don't have the respect of not taking advantage of a situation. Like, it would be the easiest thing, I keep hearing other people say, is to take what's already out there and run with it. The hard thing is to create something from scratch. The hard thing is to be original, which I really don't think is that hard. And I'm going to and I'm going to explain why I don't think it's that hard. I don't think it's hard to be yourself. What I think is hard is getting to the point that you have to face certain things in order to actually know who you are in actual um, to get to who you are. So I think people don't want the journey. They don't want to deal with the things that come about on the journey to discovering who they really are. So it's not that being yourself is hard. It's the journey to getting to being yourself, I think, is what's holding up a lot of people. What do you think, Joanne? I think you 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 shared what you just shared is exactly what it is. People people aren't willing to put in the work. You know, they, it's so much easier to copy others than to be creative. But what they fail to understand is creativity comes from within. You know, and it should be about who you are, what you value. Um, things you want to share, your talent, your experiences in life, that's where the creativity should come from, not just going out and searching and seeing something and saying, oh, I like that, I'm going to use that, because that's not who you are. True. And, okay, so it it just popped in my mind, and I want to make sure that I share this before it slips back out, because we know how I think of something and I get to talking and it loses. Um, I did some research, and here's the difference between putting the TM and the R after your name. Putting the TM is putting people on notice that you are going to trademark. So the truth confidant has the TM because I'm putting the world on notice that that is my unique name that I created, and I am going to trademark that. Once it gets approved by the United States Patent Trademark Office, then it will have the R for registered. So then that means that, you know, I've done the paperwork, that the government recognizes that trademark. So if you have something unique and it's really unique and you've searched everywhere, you have Google Alerts, you've done your extensive search on the U.S., pto.gov um, site searching trademark, put the TM on it so people know that belongs to me and I am going to trademark that name. It doesn't cost any money to put the TM, but you don't want to have the TM for years now, okay? <laughs> like Joanne said, if you can come up with that $600, you know, in, in, in a, I would say probably within 12 months, then – go ahead and and do the paperwork to file it. It's probably cheaper if you go online and file yourself. But that is something that I did research on because I dealt with the situation uh, with Women Are Game Changers. Another situation, this actually came from my attorney. She sent me a photo of a flyer at an event her friend attended in Georgia. Now, my my intellectual property attorney lives in Michigan. So I'm like, why is she sending me this this picture? And I look closely, and on the banner at this conference says, women are game changers. Now, her friend had no idea that I'm her client. All her friend did was say, hey, um, 
I'm at this conference. It's really great. And she was sending her a picture of the banner to let her know where she was. My attorney looked at it and was like, oh, my God, that's my client's name on the banner. So we contacted this lady, and her reason was it wasn't that big on the flyer, so I don't see what the situation is. I'm like, but, ma'am, do you not understand? Women are game changers. That's my name, and it's on your flyer. So in her mind, because it wasn't big on the flyer, it shouldn't have been a big deal to my attorney and myself. I thought that was a little absurd. <laughs> like, who, you know, who, who thinks that? Who does that? Um, I guess that's the same as, as the person in North Carolina, you know, Joanne, they they had to know you existed because you've been out here a while. I mean, you've had conferences. You were in three states. You know, I don't know what pe- I don't know what people's thinking is. You know, oh, it's not that big of a deal. What? <laughs> exactly. I'm just I was just flabbergasted. I, I said, oh my god, you know, this is not a common name. This is not something you just you know, go and find anywhere. So why would you think that it was okay to use it? And surely you knew that I would be, uh, you know, I would recognize that. So when I went to the uh, the state, uh, when I was doing a DBA for something else and I asked about it, they told me, they said, because you are – uh, incorporated and you are a federal entity, you know, all you have to do is contact these people and let them know that they must discontinue using that name because you have documentation showing how long you've been in existence. So it would be a problem, you know. The thing is, it's not a problem. The problem is having to deal with it at all. So, yeah. and I really like what you said about <clears throat> the TM and the R because that means that people do not have to already have the trademark to put TM. They can, they're they showing that they're in the process. So pe- everyone should start using that if they plan on having a viable business that's going to be around Oh. Even if you don't know whether you are or not, you should take that extra step to secure your name and brand. I I agree, and I and I want to share a, a story on the flip side because I don't want people to think that you know I haven't been on the other side, and I've been on the other side by accident. Um, and th- and again, it dealt with uh, fusion. What happened, my graphic designer found some really great images, and so she contacted the photographer. The photographer let us use the photos, and we had them on the flyers. We're ready to go. They're out there. And then, boom, I get a Facebook inbox saying that I'm going, that, you know, a lawyer's going to contact me for stealing photos. And I'm thinking to myself, what photos did I steal? And so, you know, I'm going back and forth with this lady saying, I don't understand what you're talking about. Long story short, her photographer did not have permission to give us those photos to use for Fusion because she had hired that photographer to take photos of her and her employees for their business. And, you know, what was really, really funny is that um, what was really funny is that (laughs) – we had to scrub the entire, entire uh, website and uh, Internet with those photos. So what I'm going to do real quick is, you know, let Joanne, you know, give one piece of advice, and she's going to head out, and then I'm going to wrap up the episode by myself. So, Joanne, what is one piece of advice you need to or you think people need to know when it comes to protecting their ideas? One piece of advice I would give is don't think about how you would do things. Understand that everyone is not you. They don't have the moral values. They don't have the the conscience. You know, they don't care like you care. Think about the world. 
and the fact that there are people out there that don't care. So be cognizant of that. Trademark your name so that you can have a viable, great business that if you decide to sell in the future, it's available to sell and it will be worth more with the trademark. Well, thank you, Joanne, for joining us this episode. And um, everyone, go to the website. I will have all of Joanne's contact information and more about Essence of a Lady and Yale Mentoring. Okay, thank so you, Vanetta. You... Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. So um, I am going to, you know, continue with what I was saying about the, the story about the photos. So what happened after, you know, she and I went back and forth um, via messaging, and then we got on the phone and spoke, and she explained the situation about the photos and how, you know, she had hired this photographer to do the photo shoot for her. And those were, and what was crazy about the whole situation, she was the lady in the photo. So after I spoke with my graphic designer, my graphic designer sent her the information that her photographer sent saying we had um, permission to use them. So what turned out, she did not know her photographer was actually selling her photo behind her back. That in and of itself was crazy. So we went ahead, my graphic designer and I, we scrubbed the entire Internet, we pulled it down, we redid all of my graphics with new photos and everything um, for Fusion. But here's what I want you all to understand. When you are working with someone who is not with your company, like an outside vendor, outside business entity or whatever, you need to make sure that you have documents and contracts in place to let them know that what they are helping you with is only for your business that they should not have permission to sell it behind your back. And if they do, there's legal action. But you need to make sure it's in writing before it happens so you're not surprised going online and seeing your photo being used by someone else who have documentation and proof that they have permission to use that that photo. So that was crazy in in and of itself for me to be on the other side of the situation where I'm like, we did everything right, you know, but the – the culprit in the entire situation was the photographer. So that in and of itself was crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, (laughs) So I want you all to understand that protecting your ideas is a constant daily battle. You know, you need to have Google alerts. You need to make sure you trademark. You need to make sure that you aren't, taking someone's information intentionally or unintentionally, okay? So now I am going to give my final toast. Okay, I am going to give my final toast. So my final toast in today's episode, where we're talking about, you know, people stealing your ideas, is to understand that you need to trademark ASAP. As soon as possible, you need to make sure that you have that in your budget when you start a business, that owning your name, literally owning your name is one of the most important things you can do is way more important than sitting there spending six months building a website. Because I know a lot of people don't start a business because they're building this website, and when it comes out, it looks just like everyone else's. Let's be honest about that. It looks like everyone else's. However, someone then takes your name because you did not trademark. So that six months and all that money you spent on a website, you need to actually take that and trademark your name, own your name. That's something we as as African Americans really have a hard time with. We do not own stuff, and your name is what you can own. So make sure that you get that trademark. If you cannot come up with the money, put that PM after it. 
Start saving that money. Put people on notice. This is my name. I'm going to own it. Okay, once it's out there with the TM, you have you now have proof that you are using it first. So that is my final takeaway. This has been a Toast to Truth with Bernetta Arfrini. That's me, chatting it up with my good friend, Joanne A.J. Scott of Essence of a Lady. And we share the consequences we've encountered by not trademarking our name. Thank you for joining Episode 5. Go to BernettaRFriending.com for more information on today's episode.